Okay, today I'm going to show you how to put clothes onto an animal. Now I'm actually doing mine for a worth1000.com contest called How to Hide an Elephant. The objective is to be creative and of course show photo editing skill. In this case, I've chosen to dress up an elephant as Waldo, like from the Where's Waldo books. And there's always a chance that you could go onto Google and find an elephant already wearing a red and white sweater, but that's probably not going to happen. Trust me, I've looked. So we're going to create our own red and white striped sweater, primarily using the transform and warp tools, and then we'll overlay a little bit of photographed wrinkles on top of it. So we're going to start by creating a red stripe. Go figure. So I'm going to use the marquee tool to first make a rectangle on a new layer and then I'm going to press alt delete to fill it with my foreground color. Then I'm going to drag my selection down holding shift so it goes straight and use control delete to fill it with the background color which is white. Control delete will deselect and then I usually hold the control button down to quickly switch over to the arrow tool just to grab and move things. Now hold down the alt button and drag down to make a copy of your layer. We'll do this a couple more times and I also want you to take note that when I'm doing this I'm also holding shift which keeps my layer straight so it goes always horizontal or vertical and not off to the side and once I have enough copies made I will click on the first layer, hold shift and select all of the layers and then merge them together. Okay, now we're going to try and make this look like it's wrapped around the body of the elephant. However, due to perspective and depth, I know that the stripes towards the back of the elephant are going to need to be smaller and thinner because they're further away. But before we do that, let's make a copy of this layer, which will be used for the legs later on. And we'll hide those for now and go back to our original layer. Now, when we go to transform this, we'll hit Control t Let's rotate it 90 degrees and start to bring the back corners closer together which is going to add a sense of depth. What I'm doing here is holding control and then dragging downward while holding shift to keep it straight and also holding alt to make it do the same thing to the opposite side. Though we're going to want this to be a rectangle for the warp tool we're about to use so I'm going to use the marquee tool to make a rectangle and then press control shift I to invert that selection and delete everything else. Now let's bring the opacity down just a little bit so we can see the elephant behind the stripes. Then I'm hitting control T and I'm going to transform the box a little bit to just kind of move it into place before using the warp tool. Now without hitting enter go to edit, transform, and warp. The warp tool allows us to bend the box around the outline of the elephant. I'm going to start by making the collar. And while doing this, try to stretch each area somewhat proportionately so that your stripes maintain their width. And it's okay if your stripes go outside of the outline of the elephant a little bit. We can just delete or erase that area later. But make sure everything's covered that should be because it's harder to add what's not there. I'm speeding up this portion of the video just a little bit so that we can get to the important things faster. As we get the general shape finished, we'll move on to the leg. And just like before, we'll hit Control T to start to transform it. And once we have it in the right position, we'll go up to Edit, Transform, and Warp to bend it around the leg. Here in a minute instead of just using the eraser to delete what we don't need we're going to use a mask tool and hide what we don't need the reason why we do this is because it adds much more freedom and flexibility to your work you can very quickly mask or hide a portion of an image just to see if it's what you want and then later you can refine it and make it look good to use a mask, start by selecting the layer you want, in this case it's the leg of the elephant, and then click the mask button at the bottom of the layer's palette. You'll notice that it adds a little white box on the layer. Anything inside this box that's black will be invisible on your image. 
For example, if I grab the paintbrush tool, switch the color to black, make sure my opacity is up to 100%, and paint within this area, you'll notice it looks like it's erasing. But it's actually just hiding those parts of the image. So if we want, we could switch to white and bring back the portions that we need later on. This allows you to make a quick mask to see if you like where the image is going, and then you can refine it to your liking. Since I know this is how I want it, I'll go ahead and clean up the edges. Just make sure that you have the mask selected and not the image. While doing this, I am pressing the X button to quickly switch between black and white. And again, I've really sped up the video to get through the masking process. I'd say this probably took me about 10 minutes. Using a tablet with pen pressure makes this much easier. Also, I might add, you can use the brackets to make the size of your cursor larger or smaller. Once I'm almost finished, I'll increase the opacity to 100% and clean up any stray areas. And once we're finished with the masking, we can collapse these layers if you want. And if you just want a painted effect, at this point you could swap your blending mode over to, say, soft light, and that will give you a pretty good result. But that's not what we want, so the next step is to start adding some wrinkles. I just went to Google and found several images of plain shirts with wrinkles in them. You want a plain shirt because we're going to remove the color and use the shadows to form the wrinkles in our clothing. Alright, let's make our shirts blending normal again. I'm going to lower the opacity slightly. And then let's go over to one of our shirts with wrinkles and using the lasso tool, circle some of the wrinkles that you want to use. Then copy and paste those and we'll begin to erase the areas around the wrinkles that we don't need. Then go to Edit Adjustments, Hue and Saturation and bring the saturation down till the image is black and white or almost black and white. If needed, you can go to Image Adjustments and then use the curves or levels to alter the contrast of your wrinkles. Though I recommend doing this later after you already have your wrinkles in place. To position the wrinkles, press Ctrl T to enter into the transform mode. Rotate and scale the wrinkles until you have them about where you want them. Then without pressing enter, go to Edit, Transform, and Warp. We'll use the Warp tool to bend the wrinkles how we want them. Once you're satisfied, press enter. And try out a few different blending modes to see what you like. Overlay can sometimes have impressive results, but only if there's color underneath it. So I'm going to add my own basic shadowing to the image. To start off, I'll hold Control, then click on the thumbnail of my sweater layer. This will automatically make a selection of my sweater. From here, I'll press Control H to hide the selection, but the selection is still there. Notice if I paint all over the canvas, it only paints inside of the sweater. This allows me to quickly create shadows without worrying about staying inside the lines. Once again, I'll speed the video up. I just want to try and darken the underside of the elephant and make it match the lighting. And I'll even add a few simple highlights in here too. With that out of the way, let's begin adding more wrinkles. While doing this, try to think of where wrinkles would naturally appear under the arms, at various joints, around the collar of the shirt. Take your time and only use wrinkles that look right. If you just start throwing them in there, you're just going to make a mess. And you don't always have to use the same blending mode. Try different ones out and see what works best for you. Also, don't forget to mess with the brightness and contrast. That could be the difference between a decent shadow and a great shadow. For the final touches, I'm going to add a few small shadows. One under the ear on the shirt, and the other shadows on the ends of the sleeves. This just adds a little extra realism. And as a final note, 
if you want to go the extra mile. Flatten your artwork and then go to Filter Liquify and use the Liquify tools to add a few extra bumps and curves to your wrinkles. This concludes my tutorial. I hope it inspires some of you to go out and be creative. Have fun.